These days, single sign-on or identity servers are very, very commonplace. You definitely want to use them with the sign-on as Facebook or sign-on as Google, and they're becoming more commonplace across all custom applications. We get many common questions about how these work and whether people should use them on their applications, and I want to address this in this video. Here are five key questions I'm going to run through in this video. Firstly, what is an identity provider? Secondly, why do I need an identity provider? Thirdly, what are the benefits of an identity provider? Fourthly, should I build my own or should I use one off the shelf? And finally, how do identity providers work? I'm Matt Grace, Managing Director of Flying Donkey. Let's get into it. First and foremost, what is an identity provider? The simplest way to explain this is it is a single, known third party that holds your credentials and identifies you on someone else's behalf. Let's have a look at the sign on by Facebook. Essentially, you have a username and password stored with Facebook. And when you go onto a third party site and you see the login with Facebook, essentially what that's doing is that third party site is saying, we don't know who you are. Facebook does know who you are. We'll forward you over to them to check your username and password on their identity server. And once you're okay by them, they'll send back and tell us that you are the person you say you are and you're all good to view and log in. So what this means is that you're essentially deferring your identity process to Facebook or Google or others and therefore you can concentrate on just building your software as is. From user perspective this also means they don't have to have a hundred passwords around the place. They have a single piece of information that is stored in a single identity provider and they can use that around the web. Why do I need an identity provider? This is a really good question. There's a number of reasons why identity providers are becoming more popular and I'll run through a couple of these here. First and foremost it's a very seamless experience for the user. As everyone's found they're getting more and more username and passwords now after signing up to every single site. Identity providers allow us to use a single username and password across many sites. And as again, you've seen this with the logon as Facebook. So essentially you have your single Facebook logon or your Google logon that you can use on other sites rather than signing up for an individual account at every website you visit. At the same time, identity providers are more secure. They provide a better user experience and they also potentially provide a better profit for you. The reason for this is, is that when you're building a piece of software, your differentiation is not around providing username and password functionality. That is expected software. So what you really want to do is when you're looking at a piece of software, usually outsource the pieces that don't differentiate yourself and really concentrate on the pieces that do. So from an identity server perspective, providing a username and password login feature really is something that's bread and butter and is expected of everything. Not having to build that saves you money and time in the process and therefore defers it to someone else to handle. At the same time, with the way the world's going, security is becoming a much more critical feature. And the login and username and password is the key piece that keeps people authenticated and out of places they shouldn't be. So there's always updates and various changes that are required in this area. One that's becoming more and more common is multi-factor authentication. This is where you either send a text message or an app to prove that you are who you are. And this part of the workflow is handled by identity servers. Therefore, if you want to put a username and password and multi-factor authentication into your application, you could build this from scratch, but it's going to take significant time. Otherwise, you can plug in an off-the-shelf identity server fairly quickly, get the levels of users that you need, the credentials that you want, as well as multi-factor authentication all out of the box. You can then concentrate on building your software and delivering the value you want to your clients. Should I build my own identity server or should I use a custom SaaS provider? This is a hard one to answer because it's really going to depend on the individual client's needs. As with all SaaS models, they're generally based on a per user basis. On the other hand, if you start having significant users, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Now, for example, I know Microsoft Azure's B2C product allows up to the first 50,000 users for free. So this is a very competitive plan for someone who's just trying to start a website and doesn't have that many users. They can plug this in and they can come back at a later stage and potentially build their own. My recommendation here is just when you're starting small, don't build anything you don't need to. So potentially plug in a small identity server and just use its minimal features. As you build out your application, it starts to make more sense to actually build your own, as a lot of languages actually have identity server built into them, for example, .NET, that you essentially can provision out of the box. It's then it's going to be down to you to host it and configure it and make sure it's working correctly and update it on an ongoing basis. The summary really here is, my suggestion is always start small, go with a SaaS product, and once you build your product up a little bit more, you can start customizing and building your own identity server. It's really not that much work, but it does help you get out of the blocks a bit quicker. The final question is how do identity providers work? I've touched on this in most of the answers. A simple point is when you go onto a site and you see the login or sign in with Facebook or Google button, this is where the identity server piece happens. Essentially, there's a couple of redirects that occur here. So you click on the button, it goes out to identity server and asks you for your email address. At this point, it's gonna say and check whether you are actually a user on that site. Let's say you're using the login with Google. It's gonna check that username already exists with Google and then it's gonna prompt you for your password. Google will then authenticate that password and username are correct and they're gonna pass back a token to the application and say yes, I know who this user is. There's some subsequent calls between the two to provision any scopes or permissioning that was required for the application. And then once that's done, you're essentially entered into the application as an authenticated user. So from a user perspective, it's actually quite seamless because you log in with the existing username and password you already have for that other service. And in the background, there is a couple of redirects that are done. So it's actually quite simple for the user. There's two or three screens you see, they flicker and then you're into the application. If a multi-factor authentication flow is also entered here, that will be handled by the identity server. And therefore they'll be prompting you for any security codes or apps 
that you have to confirm in a second way that you are the person you say you are. I hope that helps answer some of the frequently asked questions we get on what an identity server is and why it might work for your business. If you do have any questions about integrating identity server into your software or your business, feel free to reach out and have a chat. Thank you.